All right, good afternoon. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, good afternoon. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about integrating uh, Mathematica with Twitter, uh, which has been an interesting journey. Uh, before I get started, though, I, I wanted to give out some acknowledgments to some folks that worked really hard on this, uh, on this little project that started some months ago before we were getting ready for this conference. Uh, it was my colleague, Alan Savoy, who is uh, back in the, the back of the room, um, who wrote uh, most of the underlying code. And uh, also my colleague, uh, Trip Librand, uh, also with our company, who did a lot of the user testing and, and some, of the, some of the local testing as well. And Todd Gailey, who gave us some, some great advice and guidance and counsel as we were putting all this together, a, a J-Link and other uh, expert who uh, helped us greatly. <clears throat> so uh, a little bit of uh, background. And I hope you can read that OK. I can certainly uh, magnify if, if we need to. Uh, but in our view, the work that we do, and, and what we do for a living is we build a lot of mathematical models for corporations and governments. And often we're required to take Mathematica and put it together with something else to form a system that's even bigger and has more capability. And even Stephen made some comments this morning about uh, taking Mathematica and connecting it with other devices and systems to make it powerful. Uh, we completely agree with that philosophy. It's, it's extraordinary what, uh, what math Mathematica allows you to connect to it. It's equally extraordinary what kind of results come out uh, as putting to get Mathematica together in some interesting combinations with other systems. Two years ago, we were at this conference and we uh, gave a talk about integrating Mathematica with Google technologies, uh, Google Maps, Google Earth, Google Documents. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So uh, this year we said, uh, you know, what, uh, what, are, what are we looking at? Well, you know, one thing that uh, we get exposed to a, a lot of is uh, social networks. Um, I have to say I don't spend a lot of my time on social networks, but um, most of them, most of us use them in, in some way, shape, or form uh, for fun. We communicate with family and colleagues and, and friends and so forth. Um, but what if we took and put some intelligence on these social networks? Having spent a little bit of time on these social networks, it could use a dose of intelligence. Um, but you know, really, it's analytical kind of intelligence. What would happen? Would that, in fact, transform these social networks from kind of a recreational sandbox to something that actually does useful work? Uh, can work for you. Um, so this was the question that we were pondering. Um, we pondered it based on some companies coming to us and asking to, us to do various things, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, but we thought, well, let's, let's take the first step. Let's see if Mathematica can be connected to a social network. Let's, let's go through that uh, step. And then from that, we'll get a better view as to what Mathematica could do in a, a social network setting. Now, I'm not talking about, just to clarify, I'm not talking about having Mathematica simply mine social network data. Um, you know, quite frankly, that's, that's a relatively straightforward uh, option, and that's sort of old news. What we're really talking about is taking Mathematica and making it a peer, a, a full peer on a social network, which means it not only reads the, uh, the messages and transactions that come its way, but it also takes those messages, does something analytical with them, and responds in kind. So uh, that, that's a full peer, both reading and responding. The responding side, actually the more, the more complicated piece to this. So we had some... Um, I have to say, you know, we, this isn't a, a truly original idea in the sense that we had some inspiration. Some years ago, there was a, there was a nice blog entry. Um, Robert Schofield did a, did a wonderful job uh, writing a blog way back in April 2009 about uh, connecting Twitter to Mathematica. And the code, uh, we tried it, didn't work. Uh, and that wasn't because Robert didn't do a good job. He did a wonderful job on, on the code. 
The fact of the matter is that uh, uh, the Twitter API changed, and in fact changes a little bit more frequently than we, than we like. Plus, uh, he wrote it really uh, more or less, it was doing this sort of read-only thing, and we wanted to go beyond that to see if it could do uh, some uh, analysis as well. But we took that as our inspiration, and we said, Let, can, we, can we build on some of this code and make something meaningful, put together something meaningful in Mathematica that would be up here on a social network? So um, the, the first thought that we had was, you know, what's the, what's the use case here? What, what actually would this thing do? What, what's, the, what's our definition of intelligence on a social network? Well, in principle, the definition uh, really is something that hangs on a social network, observes traffic or messages, does some kind of analysis of those messages or computation on those messages, and then retweets out back to its network uh, that, that, that result. So we thought, let's try to create the most minimum kind of toy example that proves the point, just short of you know, building a, a large professional scale application that would take us you know, months and years. So our, our toy application was, well, what if we created a model that would take in a number of tweets on Twitter? And by the way, I'm going to talk a lot about Twitter but every, most everything that I say, most every example I use, uh, could be done on any kind of social network. You know, there's, there's obviously there's Facebook and there's Jabber and there's a, a number of other kinds of social networks. Twitter is just being used as our example here. But what if we had a model that could take in a number of these messages, let's say on Twitter, and build a word cloud of what it observes and then tweet that word cloud back out to its followers. So we said, okay, well, what, is, what, what are the things that we need to start assembling to make that, to make that work? Uh, so obviously we start with uh, taking the Mathematica kernel and connecting it into uh, Twitter, as our example. And the thing in the middle is this Twitter 4J library. That's, that's the, the sort of approved recommended library from uh, the Twitter folks to use as the API into, into Twitter. So we started working with that. And of course, that means bringing JLink into the, the mix, which Mathematica uh, impl implemented very, very well, very nicely. And all of that works fine. But then back to uh, this, this how it works kind of thing. So we're talking about um, establishing a an, an identity for this mathematical model. Now we, internally, we call this thing the at model, kind of a play on words, you know, the at sign and model, that's how you direct message people in, in Twitter. So imagine we've created this account on behalf, this synthetic, behalf of the synthetic uh, user uh, that is actually a mathematical model, and it has this following community to it. So it has a number of people that it follows. In other words, people who tweet that it will receive those messages. And those messages go on to what Twitter calls a timeline. So you essentially have a data structure, which is a, a stack of these, uh, of these messages. What happens is, you once this, this uh, model has accumulated messages on its timeline, a special command can be sent by one of those uh, people in the following community to tell that model to do something useful, like generate a word cloud, and then uh, the next step is that it gets tweeted out to uh, its followers. So that's tweeting that message out to its followers. Okay, so that's, that's how it would work. That's kind of a description of the use case. Now, um, let's take a look at some of the uh, the key functions in here. So let's take a quick look at the code. I'm, I'm, I want to get to the, the live demo here in just a minute. Uh, but the kind of two uh, significant pieces to this. One is preparing, uh, the pre preparing Mathematica to use the, uh, the methods inside of Java, this Twitter 4J library. So there was a, a prepare Twitter function that does a couple of things in there. It installs Java first and then it adds 
uh, to the class path, the, the library itself, and then loads the library, gets it ready, creates an instance so that it can now use all of these, these Java functions. The next uh, part is then based on this command that it's given to go do something, it then formulates the cloud and then uses these Java functions to then tweet that back out. So the, this is uh, the, kind of the finishing part of that function. So uh, this wasn't, this was more complicated probably than it sounds. Uh, there, there were some challenges associated with it. Uh, as I mentioned, the API uh, changed, you know, somewhere around last year and some of the rules changed as well and we tried to do it uh, initially using CDF and then there was this certain kind of authorization that Twitter then started requiring called OAuth and um, that, you know started looking into that and there's also a usage limit on the Twitter API you have so many usages within a 15 minute window and then it sort of stops you from doing anything on on Twitter and then you know the, the streaming interface you know had had a few problems but nonetheless we were able to get the Twitter 4J library working just fine, and uh, and and it it uh, it turns out to be kind of a nice uh, nice way to, uh, to to implement it, and it works. So um, I will I will try to prove that as uh, as best I can by actually uh, tweeting. So uh, this is my own personal um, uh, Twitter account that you see. And I have a number of friends, uh, you know, stooges in my audience, who are also going to uh, to do some tweeting. So let's let's do a little tweeting. And by the way, on my network, in my social network, is this model, this this so-called at model. So everything that we start tweeting from here on will be heard by the model. So uh, let me let me just pose a question to my 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 millions of followers out there. Um, what is your favorite movie or TV show related to zombies. It's almost Halloween, so, you know, it's good to, to talk about zombies. And, uh, you know, I'll just say, you know, uh, I like The Walking Dead. Yes, Walking Dead fans. Dead zombies are the best zombies. Okay. And are there any other, I, I don't see, my millions of followers, I'm not sure what's happened to my millions of followers out there uh, sort of tweeting. Let me, uh, let me refresh my page and see. Okay, yeah, zombies rule. Th thank you, Jeff. Zombies do rule, actually. Um, let's see. Uh, my favorite zombie names are and I'll say Brunhilde. Okay, well, let's see if there's some other tweets out there. I'll refresh the page. Oh, there's Todd. Night of the Living Dead. Okay, that's that happens to be uh, his favorite. Lots of references to dead people. Um, I see dead people in the audience. Okay, looks like there's some more tweets going on here. Okay, anything else? All right. Who, who, who has a favorite zombie movie or TV show? Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Okay, all right. A little overdone, but all right. I'll, I'll accept that. Z for zombies. A book? Yeah, I'll take a book. What book? <laughs> Fine. What? Okay, the serpent 
and the rainbow. All right, let's see if there's any other tweets that, that have come in. Okay, yeah, well, the NFL is tweeting me. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, okay, that's a good one. All right, okay, so we've got a number of tweets. We just had a, kind of a funny conversation. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my model a command. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do that in the way that I described earlier. I'm going to give it a particular command. I'm going to say, uh, show me the word cloud. And I'm going to follow that with um, at, at sign hashtag um, at model. So this is a, this is a particular, uh, the, the, the model is, again, listening for uh, these commands. And so I tweet that out. And uh, it usually takes it uh, just a minute or two. And it's considering that command. And it's, it's calculating things. It's generating, it's presumably generating this word cloud. And there it is. Voila. OK, there's your word cloud. So what we just did was we um, were part of a social network. We had an intelligent device, not, not a human, but an intelligent device on this network. And it did an analysis, a trivial one, but it did an analysis of the tweets that we were uh, tweeting back and forth. And there it goes. You know, zombies obviously was the, was the most popular word, followed by favorite, followed by a few that I can't quite read there. So it, it did a, a proper word cloud. OK, so what? You know, so, so what to the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the point of this exercise? I think once we start thinking about um, putting intelligent devices on, on social networks, first of all, I, I was just intrigued by, by all this amazing range of things that we can connect Mathematica up to. And, uh, and, and again, Stephen did mention that this morning. But if we, if we take a, uh, an, an application in, built in Mathematica and we put it on a social network, we could do things like, for example, a company approached us a few years ago about doing crowd selling. This was a company in the pharmaceutical industry who had hundreds of thousands of reps go out every day selling to doctor's offices. And all these reps have smartphones. So if they go in to sell a drug like Topamax, they, you know, the doctor may love it. And he says, I like these three things about this drug. And they could tweet that out. And you know, the rep across the state could be tweeting their results and so forth. And you could have an intelligent device listening to all these tweets and then tweeting out things that are trending, things that are, seem to be working in among the sales force. So that would be one application, a practical application that you could do by putting Mathematica onto a social network. Um, remote telemetry. I don't know if you know this, but the Mars rover tweets uh, frequently. I'm not sure if it's every day, but the Mars rover is tweeting different information data. It's, it's collecting the phases that it's going through. So there's a device that's planets away that is, tw that, that is a member of a social network. And those could be grabbed and assessed and trended and analyzed. So uh, it doesn't have to be two planets away. It could be an industrial plant, uh, you know, half a mile away, or any kind of. It could be a device in your home that you could um, have as part of a part of a social network. So re remote telemetry. Probably, if we sat here and and thought about it for a while, we could probably dream up quite a number of applications of it. But it's it's exciting just to have gone through the mechanics of doing this, and we think the possibilities could be. Absolutely endless. So I'm, I'm out of time, so let me conclude there, and I'll take any questions you have. Thank you very much. I, th I think we've got a couple of minutes for questions.